for our listeners who, who who may not make this connection, we're talking with Jeff Madrick, author of Seven Bad Ideas, How Mainstream Economists Have Damaged America and the World. This is very closely tied uh, intellectually and I think culturally, emotionally with R- Reaganomics and the whole notion as Ge- Reagan said that government isn't the solution to the problem, government is the problem. It seems that at, at its core, while uh, my economist friends tell me that Milton Friedman did some good work at various points in his life. This aspect of his work and this aspect of how his work has been disseminated uh, and, and put into practice really seems to me more uh, based in emotion and uh, so- sociology and political science than it does in um, in uh, science uh, uh, or certainly the science of economics. Does that seem like a fair statement to you, Jeff? Well, I think he was a quite ideological guy. I think uh, the economics profession did not admit that for quite a while. It gr- slowly accepted Milton Friedman's ideas beginning in the 1970s. People, uh, devoted Keynesians like Larry Summers, started to become Friedman followers in the sense that uh, the, what was important was keeping spending low, was keeping, inter- therefore, interest rates low and improving savings, and all would be fine uh, once we did that. So, yeah, this is all. Friedman was a very, uh, you know, some of your uh, audience would, I'm sure, be upset to hear this, uh, but Friedman was a very simplistic version of Adam Smith. He thought the free market worked all the time. Adam Smith didn't think that, in fact. He thought there should be controls on banking and quite a few other er- and quite a few other areas. So uh, uh, it's kind of interesting that we became so dogmatic and ideological by the 1980s and into the 1990s. And it's inter- it's fascinating because to me all of that history is the story of a seduction. It's the story of the seduction of a profession, and uh, you know, unfortunately, we won't have time to go into it in any detail. But I, it, to me, it's the story of the chairs that were endowed with that thinking in mind, the think tanks that were created, but also I think the intellectual appeal. And uh, you know, it's fascinating. If I were uh, a graduate student now in anthropology, I think I would study the e- economics tribe as uh, as um, my target. But uh, some are, by the way. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear it because I've been saying for years that it's 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 badly needed. So unfortunately, we're going to you know have to close it off. But your other ideas include low inflation is all that matters. There are no speculative bubbles. These are the bad ideas among the seven. It's astonishing that people would still believe that in our this day and age. Uh, low inflation is all that matters. That bad idea seems to be driving the Fed, Federal Reserve conversations now and globalization as Friedman's folly writ large. Any uh, closing thoughts? Right, your last and seventh thought, I would like to a closing comment, at least on the, the idea that economics is a science. Econo- it's, very, it's very hard to defend economics as a science. It is about people, and people are not, uh, are not uh, chemicals. They're not minerals. They change their mind. They're very hard to predict. Science depends on predictability. And while I think economics can say very intelligent things about be- human behavior or what happens if humans behave a certain way, they can't really predict human behavior very well. And behavior is at the heart of economics. Well, I think that's very well put. I guess, you know, they used to call economics the dismal science, but with the the, the colorful effect it's having on people's lives nowadays for good and ill, maybe we have to call it the lively non-science instead. 